eerie silence pervaded the mountain pass, filling Drenet with a feeling of dread. She'd never travelled this high into the Valchark peaks before, and in her fifteen years as a sergeant in the Keep's Guard had not spent more than a week outside the walls of a terrace. But when the bestial horde appeared and the harvest fields went up in flame, everything had changed. Months of slaughter, famine and fear convinced the High Marshal to send for help. Drenet had volunteered, and for ten days she and her two dozen troopers had clambered up the jagged mountains, hauling the chestful of bullion with which they hoped to secure aid from the mercenary Caradron overlords. The skyfaring Duoden had sold the services to the people of Eretis in decades past, and Drenet prayed to Sigmar that they would again. As Drenet trudged on, a loud clatter began to echo through the ravine. She barked an order, and her troops grouped up, halberds pointed in all directions. They could see what was causing the noise. A mass of what looked like rubble was tumbling down the face. But as the avalanche descended, the gruesome truth was revealed. And it was not made of rock and boulders, but the severed heads of the Caradron mercenaries, still bound in their metallic helms. As the heads hit the snow, the first braying war cry sounded and herd after herd of snarling bestial warriors began emerging from the crack. Drenet's feeling of dread was replaced by outright panic. Hold fast, she shouted to her troops, then dug her heels deep into the snow and braced for the oncoming crash. But in a few short minutes, the mountain pass was silent again. All that was left of Drenet and her troops was a heap of mangled corpses and a chest full of worthless gold. The beasts of chaos believed themselves to be the true children of chaos. They are mutated half man, half beast, beings that stalk the wilds at the edges of the realms. They are an ancient evil and have been there since the beginning and truly will be there at the end. They do not follow a chaos god, per se. Most of them tend to believe it to be like shackles, and even go so far to look down upon any of their bestial brethren who follow a chaos god in particular. There are those few, however, that do follow one of the dark gods, be it Korn, or Nurgle, Sinesh, or Zinch. However, they do not do so by uttering prayers or sacrificing or doing rituals to their dark gods. They indulge themselves in what the dark gods favour, be that bloodshed or obsession and depravity. Back in the days before the god king awoken in the void, the realms were a place of anarchy, where tribes of men, Aeoth and Duridan, lived separated and primitive, and this favoured the beastmen, the Thunderscorn, Warherd, as with mountain raids, and revel in the carnage and the anarchy of such a world where there was no civilization. When the God King finally awoke, and the Age of Myth began, he brought the tribes together, as he once did in the Old World, erecting civilization and empires, massive constructions, giant walls and cities, where people could live safe and abide by all that which the beasts of chaos hate. 
So the Beast of Chaos attacked. They would not let this happen. However, even though they trampled past most guard, most human, and Duridan, as they attempted to resist the oncoming slaughter that comes with every herd's attack, the God King sent his warriors down from the heavens, the Stormcast Eternal, and only then did the Beasts of Chaos face any true resistance. They were forced back into the wilds, pushed almost to extinction, and they regrouped to lick their wounds, and decided to wait for the best time to strike, to gain in number and in strength before they assaulted the world of order once more. It was not until the ruinous powers of chaos seeped back into the realm once more, and that the age of chaos began, did the beasts, the children of chaos, return to the onslaught. Now that the Stormcast Eternals had been put on the back foot, anarchy reigned in the wilderness. No man, elf, nor Duridan, dared step foot in the darkness. And with this newfound freedom, the beasts of chaos grew and multiplied into phrase. And these phrase slowly became a great phrase, where thousands upon thousands of bestigors, ungors, bulgors grouped together to follow one path, a united path. There are three main great phrases, which I will cover in a separate video. But for the time being, they are the all heard, who believe themselves truly the bringers of chaos and destruction. They are the largest of the great phrase and spanned across all realms. No one stands against this great fray. The second are the Dark Walkers. These are the ones that linger in the shadows at night. And they lure their enemy into the wilderness or the marshlands or whichever realm they reside and allow attrition to take most of the force for them to succumb conditions and the cold and no one can hear them they would hear their own heartbeats before all around them in unison shining eyes would open and a horn would sound another worldly horn some believe they imagine until these monsters spring their trap and butcher every last one of them. The last of these great frays are the Gave Spawn. These truly are chaos, for they worship chaos in its purest form. Mutations are a blessing, whilst in most frays, any one of their kind that showed mutation would usually end up being slaughtered. However, the gay spawn worship the mutation, and mutation's purest form is that of a spawn of chaos, something truly gifted by the dark gods, and they worship these things as if they were an extension of these great dark deities. The hierarchy of the beasts of chaos is a simple one. There is one alpha beast, and it's not through cunning or strategic genius that this alpha beast becomes the alpha. It is through strength and might. And he who is the alpha beast will remain so as long as they can fight off any challenges and defeat them in combat. 
for the Alpha Beast must be the strongest out of all in the fray. Next, within the hierarchy, are the great Bray Shamans. They themselves stand apart from the Alpha Beast, for they are connected to the Dark Gods in a way that no other Beast of Chaos will be. And they are often blessed with visions of battle to come, and they will do rituals to the great and mighty monoliths known as Herdstones. These Herdstones, they spread the ruinous powers of Chaos throughout the land, wherever they may be. After a while, the land will become mutated, and the trees will change. And depending on the realm is what affects what this Herdstone would be created from. In the realm of Shaish, it is created from the bones of long dead god beasts, whilst in other realms they may be created from volcanic rock, or cooled magma, or even prismic stones. These unholy structures weep chaos energy, and it is truly the mark that the beasts of chaos defy order. Herdstones have also been known to shoot from the ground like horrific fangs after a battle, marking where a great fray has been. Combined, nothing much can stop the beasts of chaos, for they are united with one cause, desecration an annihilation of order. They are formed up of several different types of beast. There are the Gores and the Ungors and the Bestigors, who primarily follow a beast lord. Then there are the true monsters, the Bulgors, who like their brethren, the Bestigors, are both man and beast, with the head of the livestock kept by the free guild, with massive curving horns, the torso of a muscular man, and the legs of a beast, hoofed and covered in matted fur. These bulgors, however, tower above their bestical brethren, and men alike, and fueled by a blood greed to consume flesh, drives these powerful, muscular beings into the fray, swinging great axes to slice down ranks of men in one blow. And then there are the Thunderscorn, the Dragonovers, beings of immense strength and might, and they can call down storms of lightning upon their foes, and have been blessed with the gift of immortality. These, however, do not tend to pray to the dark gods, and use their own power and strength. The Bulgors tend to follow a doom ball. The only difference between the two is a doom ball is far larger, and a shagoth is whom the thunderscorn follow. We are the children of chaos, and we are monsters. A man with a rifle is deadly, but take the rifle away, and he becomes prey. Take the axe from our hands, and we will crush you under hoof, or impel you upon our horns. We are the true children of chaos. Thank you for listening. My name's Shadowraith, and I'll see you next time.